Hey, I'm Scott, and this is the Steady Cross. What is it and how does it work? Today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So the Steady Cross is a motorless magnetic camera stabilizer. But again, what does that mean? If you've ever looked into camera stabilizers, you know that generally there are two major types. There's the motorless and then there are electronic gimbals. This is a glide cam and this is an example of a motorless gimbal. There are no electronics in here whatsoever. It's going to rely on gravity and your own actual control to stabilize your camera. This is the Moza Air 2 and this is an example of an electronic stabilizer or a three axis gimbal because there are actually three motors in this that help to actually keep your camera in one position or follow you depending on what settings you program into the gimbal. While this video is about the Steady Cross, just to kind of help to explain some of the appeal of this design, I want to very quickly and lightly go over some of the pros and cons of each of these styles of stabilizers. For me, something like the Glide Cam here has some major pros and major cons. Some of those pros are it's obviously motorless, which means that there are no electronics in here to break, there's nothing to recharge, there's nothing that can go wrong except for your own technique. That can be an extremely, extremely helpful thing if you've ever had to struggle with some of the technicalities of those electronic gimbals on set when you're in a rush. This won't have any of those problems. As long as you know how to use it, it's gonna be there for you for years. And you can just throw it in your car, you can put it on the ground, you don't have to worry about turning the motors off before you put it down, you don't have to worry about grabbing your camera. If you want to be using the gimbal and then you want to quickly grab one handheld shot, you can do that without having to turn the motors off because you can touch the camera. You can do whatever you want here and not have to worry about messing up the electronics. Obviously there's no camera on here right now, but the movement that you'll get from a stabilizer like this is also going to be a little bit more organic. It's not going to be so overly perfect and it's not going to suffer from those little jitters that you might see in electronic gimbals, especially if those are a little bit imperfectly balanced, which a lot of people often struggle with. The design of this gimbal here too is going to compensate a lot more for that up and down movement as you walk compared to an electronic gimbal. So generally this is going to feel a lot more like you're really smoothly flying along compared to an electronic gimbal. Another pro of this system can be a con in some cases, and that's the fact that it can hold generally a lot more weight than some of the electronic gimbals. Of course, there are electronic gimbals that can hold more weight, but if you want something that is really going to perform well at that higher weight, they can get expensive very quick. The downside of that is that this can get very heavy very quickly because the design of this means you can only support that weight with one hand while the other is supposed to very gently just guide your camera along. So all of that weight is going to be rested on one arm that you're holding out in front of you, trying to control the camera at the same time and being delicate. So it's not as easy as it looks. Even with lighter cameras, this can get pretty heavy pretty quick. And there are support systems available with vests and arms that will take the weight for you so you can focus on controlling it but they're big and they're clunky and it's not something you're gonna really go day to day shooting with on a casual basis. Another huge con of this for me could just be the fact that it takes a lot of time and patience to really get a good grip on how to use it effectively. And you might be able to get some decent footage out of it without a lot of practice. You're not gonna get really good footage consistently out of it. It does take a lot of skill to use. One last con of this compared to an electronic gimbal is the fact that on a day like today where it's pretty windy, it's going to get a little bit tricky to use because there's no motors to compensate for that. This is all based on gravity and wind is going to affect that. So I've already touched on some of the pros and cons with an electronic style stabilizer by talking about the glide cam, but just to go into a little bit more detail, obviously this is an electronic gimbal. It needs power. So you're going to have to worry about recharging batteries. You're going to have to think about things like the firmware in here. Updating your firmware can sometimes render this completely useless and you know, there are a whole bunch of issues that go along with electronics. If you don't have this perfectly balanced, you can see some little micro jitters in your footage sometimes. And if you really don't have it balanced, the motors will just shut down on you. There are some huge advantages to a system like this though. And one of those is that you can hold this with two hands, you know, either like this or with a dual handle or a ring type setup. And that can spread that weight a lot more effectively. And it's going to be a lot more pleasant to use for longer shoots without any additional support. The quality of the stabilization is also going to rely a lot less on your technique. Technique is still very important. I don't mean to downplay that, but it's going to be a lot easier for people with no experience to pick up and use semi-successfully. Another huge pro of this is that there are different follow modes and depending on which gimbal you use, there are different follow modes programmed into there. Like the Moza Air 2 has inception mode, it has individual control of each motor so you can lock and unlock each of the motors so that way it will either hold it in place or follow you in that particular direction. That means it's going to be a lot easier than a motorless gimbal to get shots that tilt up, tilt down, that roll around the roll axis and it's going to do some things that a motorless gimbal just can't do. Of course that's not a complete list of all the pros and cons of these systems 
systems. And you know, that could be a long, long list. And to a certain point, it's gonna depend on the user. It's gonna depend on the situation. But just to give you a little bit of background information before I talk about what this is, I thought I'd explain that just a little bit. So like I said, this is a non-motorized stabilizer. That means there's no electronics in here, which means you don't have to worry about charging batteries. You don't have to worry about anything freaking out on you or firmware updates and things like that. What you see here is what you get. You don't have to turn it on. You can grab your camera, you can grab the stabilizer, and you don't have to worry about damaging the motors. It's gonna be a bit more rugged in terms of how you can handle it. It's using a gravity-based stabilization similar to a glide cam, so you're gonna get a little bit more of an organic feel to your footage than you would with an electronic stabilizer. Unlike the glide cam though, you can hold this with two hands. So although this doesn't hold a whole lot of weight, it's gonna distribute that weight a lot more, and it's gonna make it a lot easier to use over longer periods of time. With a glide cam, you're actually going to physically touch that center post and guide your camera in the direction that you want it to face. And that can take a lot of practice, but also you're holding this with two hands already. So that's where the magnetic system comes into play. You can see that as I turn, this is actually following the direction that I'm facing. And it's a very smooth movement, and that's because in the base of this is actually a magnet, which is going to pull it in the direction as you turn this. And it's going to be a very smooth movement because it's not locked down to that one position. It's just pulling it towards that as you move it because of the magnet. So it's gonna be a very, very organic and smooth movement, but it's a lot easier to control than the very delicate touch you have to master when you're using a glide cam. Because of this design here, you can also just very easily use your thumbs right here to push and tilt the camera forward very smoothly or to tilt the camera up very smoothly. And I found that this is a lot easier to do than with a glide cam because the glide cam requires a very delicate touch and it's a very difficult thing to master. This is going to take a little bit more practice to use than an electronic gimbal, but I have found that it is a much, much faster learning curve compared to a glide cam. Of course, this is not perfect. None of these systems are perfect, but one of the biggest drawbacks for me so far has just been the weight capacity. And this doesn't have a terrible payload, but it doesn't have the best either. They will be making higher payload versions in the future, and I'm very interested in that. But just for me and the cameras that I usually film with, this was a little bit limiting in the choices that I could have for, you know, uh, camera and lens combinations. But again, they will be having higher uh, payload versions in the future, and this is gonna be more than enough for a lot of people who shoot with smaller mirrorless cameras. This is also not the most compact stabilizer in the world, just, you know, because of its form factor. And mine did not ship with a case. I believe that they will be shipping with a case when they're actually being sold to the public, but I'm not sure what that case will really be like, and if you're gonna be required to take this apart to put it into the case. If you are required to take it apart, it's not going to be that quick to do that, and you will need some tools. So I'm kind of interested to see what design they will come up with for that case. In terms of actually using it, the thing that I found the most difficult to get the hang of is just that these handles do have a little bit of friction to them. So when you tilt forward, the camera's gonna tilt forward a little bit. And when you tilt back, it's gonna tilt back a little bit. So if you don't want that wobbling in your footage, you have to make sure that you keep your hands at this same angle as you move. Uh, you can use it to your advantage, of course, if you wanna tilt down a little bit, you can do that without even touching anything. But if you don't want that movement in your footage, you're gonna have to be really careful to just to keep your hands at this consistent angle. As always though, getting your camera balanced on here is going to be a key factor in how well it's going to stabilize your footage, as well as some of the settings that you can dial in here to your own personal taste. But let's go ahead and take a look at how to get this set up. So in getting this camera balanced, you wanna make sure that your weight is centered, so that way your camera stays vertical, just like a glide cam. But also you wanna make sure that the weight distribution of your camera isn't going to cause it to spin, especially when you're leaning a little bit forward or backwards. You don't want the weight distribution to cause that to push in any direction because the magnet, again, is what's going to be keeping your camera in line with the direction you want it to be facing. So if you have that weight distributed in a weird way that causes any extra spin, it's gonna be fighting against that magnet and we don't want that. So you can see here on the base of this, we have this arrow here, which is the front leg. It's the direction that your camera is gonna be facing in. And then on this base, which spins, you have a red arrow and a green semicircle. And this red arrow is going to mark where this is going to line up with this arrow when you're actively using it. So you can see here that as I turn this a little bit and let it go, the magnet is going to pull that back into alignment. But if I have this facing the other direction, when I pull it off center a little bit, it's not gonna move because the 
magnet is in the other side. So we want to turn this around to face this direction so that way the green semicircle is lined up with this arrow when we're going to balance it, just to make sure that magnet doesn't affect our balance when we're checking things. On the top here we have a quick release plate and there's a built-in bubble level here which will come in handy to make sure that your camera is level when we're checking the balance in just a second. There are also some screws on the side here which you can use to shift your camera left and right as well as counterweights which you can use to make some micro adjustments for the balance which we'll see in just a second. This is also Manfrotto compatible so if you have Manfrotto plates on your camera you can go ahead and use those right there but this does come with a plate as well of course. I've already attached that to my camera so we're going to go ahead and slide that into here. Our first goal is going to be to find the balance in this front and back direction. So what you're gonna do is slide this back and forth in that quick release plate to find more or less the center of balance. And then you can use these counterweights to get some fine adjustments. But basically you wanna find it as close as you can just by sliding the entire camera back and forth in your plate. So when you think you've got more or less the center of balance according to the weight distribution of your camera, you're going to tilt this on the side to see if your camera falls forward or backwards. And in my case, the camera is falling forward, so I wanna slide it a little bit more back. So we're gonna loosen this up, slide it just a little bit back because it wasn't anything drastic, so just a little adjustment here. And we'll check that again. So I'll put it on the side, and you can see that now it's going just a little bit back. So I want to move back in the forward direction to counteract that, and that is really a slow movement, so I really just want to make fine adjustments here. And at this point, I could probably just use these counterweights to make adjustments because that is a really, really small adjustment that needs to be made. But you can just try that once more. And I can see that I went too far. Like I said, I think I should have just gone with little micro adjustments here, but we'll slide that back just a hair and check it again. And now I'm more or less staying in place. I'm falling slightly backwards, so uh, we can use these counterweights right here. Uh, and you can see the movement as you screw them in. So. As you screw them, this is going to move it forward and that's gonna pull the weight a little bit more forward just as it moves. And you want to find where it's pretty much gonna stay in the center right there. And again, this is where you can use this level on the side here to make sure that this camera is actually level. So right now it looks maybe like it's okay, but I can see that my camera is actually leaning a little bit to the front. So I'm gonna go back, make those micro adjustments there. And looking at the level, my camera is pretty much level and it's staying in place here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stay with that just for now. You can make some more micro adjustments later, but first we're going to make sure that it's balanced in this left and right direction. To do that is very similar, but now you're going to put it straight out and make sure that your lens is pointing straight down and the camera's not twisting to one side or the other. If you need to make adjustments, you can use this screw here on the side to shift your camera to the left or right. So let's go ahead and hold my camera out front holding the lens pointing straight down. And you can see it's turning a little bit this way. So I'm gonna shift the weight back in this direction to counteract that by using this screw. And again, as you do it, you can see which way it's moving. So it's very visual uh, in terms of finding the balance here. And again, these micro adjustments really, really are micro. They'll make a very, very big impact even with just small movements here. So I'll turn it once at a time and basically staying in place right now with that lens pointing straight down. Just a quick note here, um, you can lift these handles up and down. So if you're holding this to find the balance and it feels like it's too heavy because the weight is all out here, you could just release that lock, slide these down, and you can hold this here as well. And it just makes it a little bit easier to hold out at this angle um, because of the weight, the way that the weight is all gonna be up at the top here. Anyway, at this point, you're gonna once again want to double check the balance on both of those directions once more. and that is balanced. After that, this spin will no longer affect the next couple of steps, so you can go ahead and put this back into the correct position. Next up is going to be to adjust the height of these handles here, and if you've ever used a glide cam, you'll know that just as you adjust the height of this, uh, it's going to affect the center of gravity, you know, in relation to the weight that you have up top here. So with a heavier camera like I have up here, if I put this too low, it's just gonna fall over when I pick it up because the weight is all up top and it's just gonna fall over on me, so that's no good. Uh, if you put it way up at the top, it's going to kind of hold this position really well because your, your center of uh, balance here is gonna be right close to where all of your weight is. So it's gonna hold that really, really well. It's not gonna wiggle on you or, or tilt around on you as much. You can play around with this a little bit depending on the weight of your camera setup, but for me, I like to keep it pretty high up on here just to have a little bit more of a stable setup. 
So next up are these little screws here which control these little uh, brake pads basically which will use friction up against this center part right here to kind of hold this in the vertical position or if it does get tilted like this it will kind of bring it back to a rest at that center position uh, slower or faster depending on how much friction you put in there so you can see as I tilt it back and forth here uh, it's going to come to a stop in the center relatively quickly in my case because I have these a little bit tight but if you loosen them up more it's going to tilt back and forth a lot more before it comes to that rest in the center there and if you put these too tight then every little movement that you make is going to push it in one direction or the other so you want to find like a nice balance uh, of these where it will stop that swaying kind of motion but it won't affect it so much that every little movement that you make is going to affect the roll of your camera as well. For me, I found that a level of friction here where it will kind of hold these handles in place a little bit. And as you saw, when I tilt it from side to side, it will come to a rest in maybe one or two swings. And that's just been a good kind of middle ground for me here where I have enough friction to stop it from wobbling side to side too much, but it's not so much friction that all of my little movements are going to affect it either. So while each of these types of stabilizers obviously have their own pros and cons, and I think they each have their place in different types of production, I found that the Steadicross was a really fun and really nice balance between these two types of gimbals here. Obviously it's not perfect, but none of these are, and I hope that this video helped you to have a better understanding of what this is and if it's going to be the right choice for you. Again, I will have another video to show how the actual stabilization of each of these compare, as well as a couple other types of support, shoulder rig, halo rig, handheld. Um, honestly, the thing that's been holding me off from doing that is just the fact that this really doesn't deal with wind very well, and it's just been incredibly windy every day here recently. But hopefully I will be able to get that video together soon. For now, if you have any questions or comments about the Steady Cross, let me know down below in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. If you like this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future, and as always, thank you for watching.